Hi everyone and welcome along to the very first Celtic View live podcast. How are we all? Hope we're all well. Thank you so much for... Thank you. It's not a round of applause for me. The guests are coming soon, so keep it for that. No, thank you so much for, for coming along to this first ever Celtic View live podcast. There's been some brilliant moments at this stadium throughout history, and this is another one you can add to that bucket list. You can tell your grandkids eventually in the future you're here for this first event. Um, we've got plenty coming up uh, later on in this show. We've got three very, very special guests, but with it being a Friday, I'm so thankful for everybody coming out here to be our guinea pigs for this first event, although I'm sure that the offer of free drink probably helped in that, and it's not really just to come and see us speak. Yeah, we've got three guests, and Benjamin Segrist, and Amy Gallagher, and Matthew Anderson, that are going to be joining us in just a few minutes to talk all about their Celtic career. Um, we want you to be part of this show, so you can be as lively as you want during it. Don't heckle too much, but I'm sure the more the pints start flowing, then that might change things a little bit. But why don't we welcome the guests for now? So we've got first team goalkeeper Benjamin Segris, B team captain Matthew Anderson, and women's team forward Amy Gallagher. Another big round of applause, everyone, for our three special guests. Ben, how are we? Good. How very are you? good, very good. How does it feel sitting up here in front of people? Is it more nervous than being out in the pitch? <laughs> um, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm kind of used to it now, um, but it's nice to, to do stuff like that. Yeah. Amy, how's things? Thank you so much for, for coming along this evening. It's okay. Good this is a place. It's a place you know well. You, you come here every day for, for training, but... Is it your first time up here in the sports bar? Yeah, uh, first time and it's, it's really nice, yeah. Brilliant, that's great. And uh, Matthew, thank you again so much for, for coming along. I'm hoping, since you're the, the B team captain, I want you to bring a bit of authority and leadership to this. I'm this not season. sure, I'm not sure about that. No, I was thinking if, if people are getting a bit too rowdy and the pints are flowing a bit too much, then Tell I want you off. to be the person to sort them out. I need your, your leadership and your commanding presence in it. Um, Guys, th yeah, again, thank you so much for, for coming along this evening. I'm sure everybody here appreciates it. We want to go through one by one a little bit on all of your careers. But Matthew, let's start with yourself. B-team captain. Everyone, round of applause for Matthew Anderson. <laughs> Matthew, I want to go all the way back to the start. Tell us a little bit about your early days coming into Celtic. How long have you been here now? I've been here since I was 13. I originally had a, a trial with Celtic when I was eight, but they said I wasn't good enough, so I didn't manage to get in. But um, I played with Motherwell for five years, and then since then I've been at Celtic. Do you remember who that person is that told you you're not good enough if you went back to... I don't, but I wouldn't say if I did anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about what that experience is like for a, a young person at that age, getting the call to say Celtic are interested and they want to sign you. I mean, you must have been... The talk of the school. <laughs> <laughs> well, my whole family are Celtic fans, so I remember exactly where I was when I found out. I was in my bed and my dad came up and told me. Um, I think he knew earlier than me, but he wanted to keep it a secret just so it didn't affect my performances. But um, yeah, I was buzzing. And that journey through the Youth Academy, changing schools, all the different aspects, constantly fighting for contracts... How difficult is it for a young player coming through to actually make it to the position you are at this moment? Moving to school was the most difficult part. Um, it sounds cliche as well, but the boys were brilliant with me uh, coming in. And I knew a few because um, there's a few from Hamilton, just like me. So it was, that was the toughest part, but yeah, they were good. How were you at school? I was good. I was yeah. decent. 
actually, uh, I know what you were expecting me to say there, but my uh, my mum and dad made sure I was I was decent, and um, yeah, I got a few a few hires. What would you have went into? Do you think if you weren't a footballer? I actually had this conversation last night with my girlfriend, um, but I didn't have an answer. So. <laughs> What about the rest of you? Were you, any of you two decent at school, Ben? I was, um, I was okay. I didn't need to do much to kind of get good grades, <laughs> which, was, which was good. Um, and luckily I have an older sister who did all my homework when I was playing football. <laughs> so we also had the same teachers, which wasn't great for me. <laughs> but um, no, it was an um, enjoyable time as well. Do you, do you know what you might have went into if you weren't a footballer? It wasn't drawing, that's for sure. Um, I was always into sports, so it would have probably been PT or something with nutrition, sports science type of thing, but it's basically what I do now, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, it's more of a time to hang out with your mates, isn't it, than actual thinking about life when you're in school. <laughs> Amy, what about yourself? Um, I've got a degree in sports coaching, so I'd probably still do Smartest something in, in the sport. Room, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Matthew, let's go back then to your days coming through the academy then and then actually making it into the stage you're at at this moment in time. I mean, I take it, were you always a Celtic fan? Yeah. 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 What's your kind of earliest memories then and what's it like to go from being a fan to then be a player that, that pulls on the badge of Celtic? Well, to be fair... Um it's a huge thing for my family as well. They they come to every game, um, so I realise how big it is, and I'm buzzing. Yeah. What's your what is your earliest memories? What can you remember about coming here? To watch. Yeah. I don't know what my earliest memory is, but probably my favourite memory. Um, it wasn't here actually. It was uh, Roderick's goal against Aberdeen to get the treble treble. Yeah, I think that's something that everybody remember. The, the goal in the Invincible treble final. I think that's probably everybody's favourite memory from their time at Celtic. Um, so then coming into the B team this season, Matthew, this has been a big season for yourself personally because you were given the captain's armband. Tell us how that conversation came about and what it was like to actually receive that. I think we had this conversation in our last interview. Um, it was more in a pre-season game um, I was told by Dan and Mick, and it wasn't made out to be a big thing. Uh, they just told me to be myself. Don't don't change the way I play and don't change the way I act. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got loads of leaders in the changing room anyway. So it's not a huge thing for me, but it's an honour at the same time. Have you found yourself having to change how you are with the boys now you're captain? And <laughs> no, I've not. I've not at all. <laughs> no. Let's talk a bit about this season then for the B team, and we'll have a chance to actually look at some of the goals at the moment, and there's been a, a couple from yourself. Tell us how the, the season has gone for the B team. You've been in so many competitions in the Lowland League and Europe, playing against Premier League opposition as well. I, as you said, we, um, we've had loads of games. We've been in loads of competitions. I think we're trying to mirror the first team in that. Um, it's, it's been really good. I think we've got a few season-defining games coming up, so probably the best time to answer that question would be in a few weeks' time, maybe when the season's finished. But so far, I'd say it's been really good. But if you compare the start to the season to how you're playing now, how do you see the development as a team and also for yourself personally? Well, over, over the last two years, I've been with the B team. And um, from the start, I think we've just got closer and closer to the way the first team play. And that's, that's what you want. That's the target. Looking back at some of those, there's, there's yourself there, that... One of a left peg into the bottom corner. Any memories stand out so far? Keeper should have saved that one. <laughs> You're not giving yourself enough credit for that, come on. <laughs> yeah, do any memories stand out so far in the season? Anything that you, you look back on and think, that's really kind of going to benefit my game going forward? Um, I think it has, it has been adding goals and assists to my game. Um, obviously, with the, the manager, that he, wants, he wants the full-backs coming in and high up the park, so that's something I've needed to add, and I feel like... I've made progress with that this season. And also, very recently, you signed a new contract with the club. Very, very exciting news for you that you're going to keep your stay at this club for a, a little bit longer. So, the question is, what, is, what does the future hold for Matthew Anderson at Celtic? <laughs> well, again, it's a really cliche answer, but it's just working hard and being ready for my chance if it comes and when it comes. Mm -hmm. 
how have you found that step up when you've went into training with the likes of Ben in the first team? The top notch. It's the, it's <laughs> honestly it's it's the intensity that you notice the most. Um, you can move up and you just see there's loads of experienced players and that. That's the difference. Um, the standard is so high and they're they're an amazing team and you can see that. Ben, have you managed to keep out a few of his shots when he's come up to training? I try to, I try to, but they try and bring it closer to the goal. So, um, <laughs> no, um, you know, it's always good when you have the young players come up and um, just for them to feel what it's like. I think we've, we've all been there in your career when you come into the first team and you're trying to keep up with the big boys. It's, it's quite a big step, but, um, you know, they're doing really well, all of them. So, credits to them. Brilliant. Well, Matthew, all the best with... The rest of the season will come back to you very shortly. But for now, everyone, a round of applause for Matthew Anderson. And let's welcome Ben Segrist. Ben, how is life treating you as a Celtic player? Good. It's been good. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been a season that's gone really fast so far. Um, obviously, uh, highly successful so far. And um, we're just going into the most important stage of the season. Um, so it's really exciting. In terms of when you're coming into a club like Celtic, I'm interested off the park what it's like moving to Glasgow, people seeing you playing for Celtic. You get noticed a lot more in the street? Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, which is nice. Um, I try to keep myself at home as much as I can. Um, but uh, no, it's been really nice. I didn't know much of Glasgow before. Um, so it's nice to go out when, when we do have a chance to just um, you know have some meals and you know, have friends and family come over and kind of show them, show them the sights a little bit. <laughs> um, but no, it's been really good. Has it all been positive, your interactions with people in the street in Glasgow? 90%, yeah, <laughs> 90%. <laughs> I mean, we're here to talk about your time at Celtic, but I'm interested as well, Ben, in your early start to the career. Not many people might have known that you actually started off at Aston Villa, where you probably would have met a couple of ex-Celtic players or managers during your time there? Yeah, so I, I left Switzerland when I was 16 um, to join Aston Villa. Um, club captain was Silvian Petrov, um, who obviously we all know. Uh, manager was Martin O'Neill, so a connection there as well. There's a lot of people in the, in the backroom staff, like uh, physios and, and doctors and sports scientists who kind of came with Martin O'Neill from, from Celtic as well, so the connection was, was always there. What was Martin like as a manager, I'm sure? Everybody that's worked under him has a, has a story or has got the glare off him at some point. I mean, I, I was young. I was only 16, so I was, I was probably more scared than anything. But, um, you know, just the way he was with the players. He was a manager who let the coaches do the training and he would kind of stay back in his office and he would sometimes pop his head out and see how he's going and all that kind of stuff. But he was very much like, um, you know, you win, you're off till Thursday, you lose, you're in Sunday type of atmosphere. Um, but yeah, he was, he was you know, in, in total control and set his teams up you know, the way he wanted to play and, and he was obviously successful at, uh, at Aston Villa. Yeah, and Stelian Petrov as well as a, a captain. Have you got any memories of him? Yeah, the biggest moaner there is. Um, he, was just, he just thought every goal is saveable. I mean, somebody could score a penalty or a tap in. He was like, come on, keeper, you got to save this. And, you know, but you know, the, one of the hardest workers you know, I've met, um, he would... He would um, he would change shirts because he was sweating so much because he was working so much in training. So um, always extras and, and, and you know, was a, was a top guy. So I enjoy seeing him, seeing him when he's doing punditry sometimes. Uh, he comes and says hello, but um, yeah, really top guy. Brilliant, that's great. And then where we all first saw you really was when you came to Dundee United, your first time up in Scotland, where you were then actually playing against Celtic, of course. What did you make last season when you were coming up against this current yeah, Celtic it was, team? It was pretty annoying, to be honest. Um, <laughs> no, we would, we would, you know, we would do our prep and and trying to. It's always about you know limit the opposition, and you just figure like this is not going to happen today. Um, almost a couple of times, almost. But it's just um, you know I'm in team meetings now, and I completely understand it now the way we play, and and it makes sense on why other teams can't. You know, even have a shot on target sometimes. And at the time, was walking off the field. I'm going, this makes no sense. Why are they always offside? Why, why are my strikers not working? Why is my fullback where he is? And 
you know, we, we just try and ask so many questions of the oppositions that in a normal game you, you might have maybe 50, 60 actions as a defender and, and when you play us, you, you know, you have to make the right decision a hundred times. You know, it's really, really difficult. So we're trying to, trying to suffocate teams and yeah, it's, it was pretty annoying being at the <laughs> other end. <laughs> I know because some of our games last season against Dundee United were our, our bigger moments. Of, well, we won't get into it too much. I don't want to bring back painful <laughs> experiences. So tell us then in the summer, the move to Celtic, how it came about and just how excited were you when you found out the deal might be happening? Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I knew I was wanted to leave. I wanted to, I wanted to do something new. I kind of felt like I needed to, to step up, have a big step up in my career. And funny enough, when, um, when Celtic won the, won the, the league title, it was at Tanadise and I um, was kind of watching and... Stevie Woods, the goalie coach, tapped me on the shoulder and says, um, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow. And I was probably the happiest boy. It was probably happier than, than the Celtic boys at that time. <laughs> um, and then I just, uh, you know, I had a good conversation with him, with the manager. Um, spoke to my agent and then I was like, yeah, I mean, tell me where, tell me when, I'm, I'm going to be there. I did think it was a bit weird when I saw you celebrate when the Celtic <laughs> players at full time. But. It, it was funny. I had um, one of my uh, one of my mates came to the game, and Josip obviously plays for for Croatia, and he's Croatian. So I got him down onto the pitch, and he was more concerned with getting Josip's picture and, and autograph. <laughs> and I was like, I've got some news to tell you, but I can't really tell you, so I'll tell you after. Um, but yeah, it was a good day. So take us in into what it's like training as a a goalkeeper with this current Celtic team. You talked there about last season, how you couldn't understand how a lot of the things the team were doing, how they were managing to do it. When did that kind of click for you and what is the kind of the big differences that you noticed? I think the first day the Stevie Woods, the goalie coach, sat me down and said, right, this is, this is what we do, this is expected of you, this is how the manager wants to play. And it, it was more, obviously, you've been more involved with the outfield players in terms of possession and, and playing games and playing out with, with, you know, with your feet. Um, whereas, um, you know, previously I probably would have opted for the long ball um, to kind of negate that space. So um, it, was, it was really when we started training where I thought, right, the, the goalie training is maybe 10, 15 minutes shorter, but the, the, the time with the team is probably a little bit longer just to be involved, to get used to it, to get used to playing with the boys, make sure they trust you, make sure this, you know, the staff trust you, you understand the system. And then the first couple of friendly games where you know you have certain tendencies what you do and somebody's telling you to do the exact opposite, which is which is a little bit weird at the beginning. Um but you know the the boys have been great in you know showing options for me when I do need to play short and all that kind of stuff. So um it's a loss a lot less uh, nerve wracking now. I mean you in those early days when you're still trying to kick it long, you having the manager in your ear though it's No, not really. I think he understands that it takes a little bit of time to transition and um you know the way we play the obvious pass is kind of always on so you can uh, you can you know you can just literally pass it to anyone on the pitch they they're asking for the ball they're making sure they move for yeah which is which is comforting for sure um but it's definitely the way we play so i didn't get too much stick yeah i mean we've had such an outstanding season so far we'll have a chance to look back at some of the moments now from this season it's just been incredible. I'm sure everybody here, if we were all to get together and say what's been your standout moment, we'd all have something different because there's been so many. But I'm going to ask you, do you have a standout memory so far? I think everybody gets carried away with, with you know, big wins and stuff like that, but it's the ones where we, we were down probably at half-time, um, you know, maybe hearts away where we won 4-3, where, you know, some people decided to give three penalties to the opposition, so... I think it's those type of games where you f you really feel like you're bonding as a team and, and, and it's really important for the momentum. Um, but I think that game there where, where we um, battered them at home is just my first, my first experience of being at home. Um, yeah, it meant everything to me. And we're seeing there, that's a goal from Kyogo against your former club, one from Cal McGregor. All late goals. What is it the manager does to make sure that we never stop? Well, he tells you a couple of times a day. Um, I think just the way we play, it's 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 the same. It's the same thing, you know. He doesn't he doesn't want you to fluster. He doesn't want you to panic just because it's the first minute or the last minute or we won a lot but one will down. I think the consistency of the way we play and and the way he wants us to play with within the 
parameters of the system and all that kind of stuff. So we know it doesn't really matter how much time is on the clock. We've got the individual class to, to make something happen, but we rely a lot on our, on our structure, which, which obviously is bringing us success. Yeah, and we're seeing there the lifting of the League Cup trophy. Hopefully some more trophies to come between now and the end of the season. Everybody, big round of applause for Ben Segrist and welcome in Amy Gallagher. Amy, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, very good. Goal scoring machine this season. How many have you got now? Uh, I think it's 15 now. Oof, that's not too bad, eh? <laughs> so, tell us, you've had some big moments so far. We're going to get into all of them. But again, you're another one like Ben. It's your first year at Celtic. How are things going for you? Yeah, I'm loving it. Um, ever since day one, I've really enjoyed my time. Um, getting a lot of minutes and just learning and improving every day. So, I'm loving it. Give everyone a bit of a, a rundown about your career because you started off, you were so, what time did, what age did you make your debut? You were not really, really young. Yeah, I made my debut at 14 when I played for Forfar, so I've played in the league nearly 10 years now, so it's a long time. Getting old. <laughs> <laughs> a 14-year-old play. what was that like back then? Because you must have been playing against girls and uh, women that were a lot older. How did you manage to, to combat that? Yeah, obviously at the time I was very young, very nervous, but I think that um, it made me as good as I am today, like playing with older players at the time, and it just gave me a lot of confidence um, and allowed me to like make moves to Hibs and make moves to Celtic. Yeah, so you're at Hibs, you're performing really well. I know Celtic were interested in you a couple of times, <laughs> so talk to us about Celtic, their interest, finally getting over the line and, and how that felt. Yeah, obviously, um, I knew of interest from Celtic, um, but... I wasn't allowed to go, but we'll not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and then when my contract was out at Hibs, um, I knew this is where I wanted to go. Um, and I came and I spoke to Fran, um, and there was only one place I wanted to go, and it was a good decision in the end, yeah. And it's a special club for you personally as well. Give everyone a little bit of a, a rundown as to why that might be. Yeah, my great-granddad, Patsy Gallagher, played. Um, I think he was a bit of a legend here many years ago. Um, I still got reminded of him. So it's nice to get reminded of him around the stadium and stuff. So it makes being here a bit more special. Are you learning more about him now you've, you've joined the club as well? That must be quite special for you and for your family. Yeah, um, obviously being reminded of him. And I've, when I first came, I was shown his medals in the, where the trophy cabinets and stuff are. So that was special. And yeah, um, just basically shown how good of a player he was back then. Yeah. So this season for yourself, so actually take us back to when you first come in then. Did you notice much of a difference between Hibs and then coming into Celtic now that we're getting to the stage with women's football where we're getting it to a more professional level? Yeah, um, I think that's why, why I came. I just wanted to be in a more professional environment. Um, obviously, making the step up from part-time to full-time was a big thing I wanted to do. Um, and just, I think, the standard of coaching as well. I wanted to play under Fran and... Uh, David and Michael, so um, and I think that's paid off because I've improved a lot this season. And you got off to the perfect start to the season. It was against your former club, Pibs, as well. We, we won 9-0 in that opening day of the season and you managed to, to get a goal and that's kick-started what's been a really incredible campaign at the moment. We're still in the hunt for the league title. We're still in the Scottish Cup as well, but talk to us about the season. We're going to have a, a look at some of the goals as well. Talk to us about some of the big moments. How's it been? Yeah, I think it's been a good season so far. Obviously, we're sitting second in the table. Um, we'd obviously like to be first, but there's still a lot of games to be played. We still need to play Glasgow City another twice uh, and Rangers again at home. So we know there's belief in the squad that um, we can be at the top of the table come the end of the season. Just seeing you there. Not bad, eh? <laughs> that was the first goal of the season. And this must have been a special moment. A goal in the 3-0 win in the Glasgow Derby. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Yeah, that's probably my favourite goal this season. I think it was a bit of a scaff, but <laughs> if it goes in, it goes in. And yeah, it was all the teams celebrating in the corner there. It was a great feeling. We've done pretty well in the derbies this season. Obviously, just on the back of a 99th minute equaliser yeah. in, in the game on Monday night. Um, you could say that things got a bit animated, but... <laughs> <laughs> How have you enjoyed playing in those, those derbies and playing those big matches for Celtic? Yeah, that's why you play football, to play in big games like that. Um, um, it was a good point for us in the end uh, on Monday night. I don't think we played that well, but we'll take the point. Um, but still to play them again at home, so hopefully we can get a lot of fans there and get three points. What has been the big 
development for the team this season? Because last year, on the back of winning two domestic trophies this year, I know the aim was to be that little bit more consistent in the league. Are you, are you happy with how things have been going so far? Yeah, I think so. I think we've been pretty consistent. Um, obviously, we've, we've drawn a few games, but I think at this point in the season, with the split, which is new, um, every team's going to drop points. So it's just about us uh, taking each game as it comes and make winning every game and we know if we win every game we're in a good chance of winning the league yeah and have we seen the best at Amy Gallagher this season that's the best football you've played in your career so far I would say so yeah um I think that just comes out of enjoyment and just learning every day um it's the most goals I've scored in a season so far um so yeah I'm just loving it really yeah we're not going to put too much pressure I'm not going to ask you if we're going to go for the, the league if it's going to be coming home but hopefully with all three of the teams, we're all on the hunt for all three league titles. So hopefully come May or June time, we're all sitting here celebrating. But everybody, a round of applause for, for Amy Gallagher. <laughs> hey, before, we, before we move on, I've got something up my sleeve for you all. A little bit of a, a quiz, which I've not mentioned to, to a lot of you. But before we get there, I wanted to go through some, some quick fire questions just to learn a bit more about your teammates. So Ben, I'll start off with you. We'll go around the houses. Who's the funniest player in the Celtic changing room? Um, there are a few ones. Um, funniest player. Greg Taylor likes a joke. Um, Is he just loud or does he like Yeah, a joke? he's loud. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not actually that funny. No, he's always, he's always up to no good, to be fair. Um, we have a few jokers, even, even the Japanese boys, they're quite funny when you tickle them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Amy? Um, Taylor Otto, but again, she's just loud, typical American. Um, Claire O'Reardon, I think she's quite funny as well. So, yeah. Matthew, funniest in the, the B team changing room? I'd you can see yourself if it is no, you as well. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> um, probably Ben McPherson or Ben Summers, the two Bens, I'd yeah. say, but it's just because they're both not right in the head. <laughs> Uh, and I'll start off with yourself, Matthew. Who's the best, would you say, technically in the B team squad? Um, I'd say Boston. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Amy? Big guy. Yourself? Yeah, I'd probably say Jacinta. Um, just she, she goes past players like they're not there, and she's really hard to get the ball off of, so I'd probably say her, yeah. Ben, you've had some time to think of your answer now? Yeah, I think Matt O'Reilly is just, it doesn't matter how you pass him the ball, he's just always managing to control it and pass it on, so I know Jota likes all his tricks and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes, you know you, Matt O'Reilly is this unbelievable thing yeah. Amy, we'll start off yourself on this one who's the biggest moaner in the changing room? Jazz I don't Easy. even think about that she moans about everything and anything hopefully she doesn't watch this but <laughs> I'm sure it'll get clipped up and sent her, Ben Craig Taylor <laughs> Craig Taylor, yeah Loves, loves a good moan. Yeah. About anything in particular, or is it just constant? Anything. 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 The <laughs> weather, the food, the hotel, the bus, anything. <laughs> Matthew, biggest moan on the B team? It seems to be a trend. Uh, ben McPherson, the funniest, obviously, but um, <laughs> I don't hear it. I've, I've just heard that. He plays on the opposite side of the park from me, so I don't get it, but um, I've heard that it's him. Yeah. Um, who's the one person, Ben, you wouldn't want to mess with? Cam. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard, to, and I've, I think I've asked him this as well. I tried. Have tried. you? Yeah, I got him in a headlock. Yeah. <laughs> and but the team managed to wriggle himself out. Yeah, he wrestled me to the ground. <laughs> I can't remember if I was speaking to him or someone else. They were saying that he never goes to the gym. No, never seen him in the gym. No. Like, how is he just? <sighs> it's incredible. Know. Yeah, I think he's a lot of genes, genetics, <laughs> and stuff. But um, it's just. It's funny sometimes when new, new, new players join and, and Cam is kind of shooting the ball for a goal kick or for a throw in and they haven't quite got the Cam experience yet. <laughs> so they just run against the brick wall. Um, so it's quite funny. Amy? Um, I think after Monday night, I'm going to say Liv Chance. <laughs> um, she's now the hard man of the squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she had Franz Corner on that one, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Matthew, the one person you wouldn't want to mess with the B team? Boston. Yeah. I never have as well, so I'd, I wouldn't like to know. <laughs> I'd like to see that between Boston and 
and Cam actually, a, a duel between the two of them, that could get quite feisty, I think. Cam coming out on top, though, do you think? Or what do you think, Matthew? You, you give him both on it? No, I can't. It yeah. has to be. <laughs> and then, last one. Start off on yourself, Matthew. You're stuck on a desert island. Who do you not want in your squad to be with you? <laughs> and you can, you can have someone with you as well, actually. You can go for both. I would have Sinello work so hard. I know he would do all the work and I'd be able to sit back and relax. And then... Um, I wouldn't have Ben Quinn because he's far too loud. <laughs> okay, Amy? I would take Taylor Otto just because we just laughed at Bimmer together all the time, so I think we'd have good laughs, but I wouldn't take Lisa Robertson. She's one of my best mates in the squad, but she's just doing my head in. Right, so okay. I don't want her. Would she be impractical in Ireland as well? Would she not be able to, to do much? Probably not, no. <laughs> she's not got much of a brain. <laughs> ben, what about yourself? What are you thinking? I think I'll take, take Skip. Uh, quite intelligent, always got a solution for everyone. Um, definitely not taking Abada. <laughs> he's just he's just from a different planet sometimes. <laughs> it's just what would you how do you think he'd get on if he was if he's stuck there? Do you think he would just walk around having no idea what to do? Yeah, he he, he would get lost. He would probably start swimming and, and come back to shore. He's just as good as a football he is, he's sometimes I'm not sure how he makes it for life. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean well that rounds up the, the quick fire questions, but we are not done there because we're going to put you all under the spot with a quiz here. So what we actually need, we've got a 60 second quiz on the clock. I need two volunteers actually. I need one person to do the timing and one person to count the scores. So I'm looking for a couple of people moving in the front here to do it. Clay, I can, I'm looking at you and maybe someone next to you. Yeah, okay. Right, so I need one of you to do the time. Get the time up, and one of you to count. Right, so what we'll do is, Ben, we'll start with yourself since you're here. Lady, ladies first, is it nice? Uh, do you want... Nah, nah, we'll start with you, you're since you're here. Right, so we've got 60 seconds on the clock. I've got no more than 15 questions. If you go past 15, then that's just it, basically. Yeah, because happen. I couldn't be bothered trying to find any more. Um, so, are we ready with the clock? Okay. Three, two, one... You made your Celtic competitive debut against which team? Ross County. Correct. What was the score in that game? 4-1. Correct. Who scored Celtic's last goal in that game? James Forrest. Correct. What player is the second top goal scorer in the Celtic team this season? Jota. Oh, no, you just mentioned him. Abada. Uh, James Forrest scored his 100th goal for Celtic with a hat-trick against which team? Hoops. Yes. What player scored hat tricks in the 9 0 win over Dundee United? Uh, Abada and Kyogo. Correct. What, what Italian club did Joe Hart play for? Torino. Correct. What other Scottish club has Aaron Moy played with? Samirin. Correct. In your second start against Motherwell, what was the score? 4 0. 4 0, yes. Uh, what player scored the most goals in the Champions League group stage for Celtic? Didn't score that many. Um. Time. Uh, I'll give you an answer. Do you J- guess? Jota. Jota is correct, yes. Okay. Well done. Yeah. Wait, no applause, everyone. <laughs> How many? Nine? No, but are you happy with that? You happy with that? Right, who wants to go next? Amy? Hi, Dr. Fall. <laughs> right, okay, Amy, you are up next. We ready with the clock again? Okay. Three. Two, one. What was the score in last season's Scottish Cup final win over Glasgow City? 2 1. 3 2. What was the score in the game where you scored your first goal for Celtic? 9 0. Yes, correct. Two players scored hat tricks in that game. Who were they? Jacinta and Clarissa. Correct. Celtic team has conceded the fewest goals in the league this season. How many? Three. Five. Name one Premier League club that Fran Alonso's worked at in England. Um, Everton. Yes. How many Americans are in the side currently? Two. Three. Oh. Uh, what European country did Caitlin Hayes play at before Celtic? What, say that again, sorry. What European country did Caitlin Hayes play at before Celtic? You can pass. Pass. Okay. Um, who are you playing in the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup? Glasgow City. Correct. How many goals have you scored against your former club Hibs this season? Two. Four. 
I've got. Uh, Jacinta played for which Italian team? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Napoli. Time. I, I've got four. Is it? Is it four? Yeah. <laughs> Doing yourself with a sandwich. Round of applause, everyone, for Amy. How many did we get there for Amy? Four. A little bit behind Amy. Sorry about that. Right, Matthew, it comes down to this. You're the last person that can match Ben's score or beat him. You confident? No, chance. no we've done a quiz before and that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, you actually weren't doing too great at it, to be fair. <laughs> right, we've got the clock ready. Three, two, one. Who's the top goal scorer in the B team this season? Joey Dawson. Correct. What team did you defeat away in the youth league? Leipzig. Correct. Name one team you scored six goals against this season. Sterling Uni. Correct. You scored an opening day of the season against which team? Cowdenbeath. Correct. What was the score in that game? 3-1. Correct. Who scored Celtic's opening goal in the 5-2 win in the Glasgow Derby? Rocco. Correct. You also scored an away win against Gretna. What was the score? 4-1. Correct. Where did Boston Lowell play before Celtic? Watford. Correct. Name one English club Dan O'Day played for. Leeds. Correct. Name one that Steve McMahon has played for. Pass. <laughs> uh, Lesotho was born in which country? Lesotho. I'll give you that, yes. Ooh, okay. Ten? Oh, round of applause. Well done, Matthew Anderson. I was unsure there just at the end. I thought that one you were uh, you didn't pass on. I thought I that was going to kill you. Well it, done. Have you been studying since the last time we done a quiz together? Is I, that knew, I knew it was coming. You warned <laughs> me about it. <laughs> Brown. So just to round off, guys, we put some feelers out to everyone out here for some, for some questions for you all. So we're going to finish off in the last five, ten minutes with some fan questions. Uh, Amy, we'll start off with yourself. This one comes from Gillian Gallagher. Gillian, if you're here. Um, if not, then sorry about that. But this is, how are you settling in with life at Celtic and is there a different expectation now as a player here under Fran and David? And as another factor, the Gallagher legacy, how good is that? Um, I don't think there's really any pressure of my great grandad and stuff. I mean, I didn't sign for that reason. I signed because I wanted to play for the football club. Um, and it's not really something I think about. Um, I think there obviously is a pressure the size of the club and you realise that the fans that come, you realise how big a club it is and every time you put on the jersey there is an expectation to win every game but it's something that comes with the game and it's something that um, I'm really enjoying playing under, yeah. We actually got quite a few from you because I think some of the, the staff and the women's team are here as well. Um, this, these ones come from Morag Murray, she had, she had a few for you. Uh, we'll go through a couple of them. Who's the best player that you've ever played against? Probably Erin Cuthbert. Um, I've played with her to Scotland Youth Ranks, but I played against her. Um, she's just very hard to play against, yeah. And what is the best thing about being from Dundee? <laughs> <laughs> Should we give you some time to think about that? Are you going to ask Ben this as well? He lived there. Um, <laughs> sunny, sunniest city in Scotland. Ben, I won't come to you now. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we've got a couple here actually for, for all of you. Um, we'll start off yourself, Ben. We'll go around the houses. Who was your favourite player growing up? Um, Buffon. Mm -hmm. And I was watching a lot of Oliver Kahn. Was it always a, a goalkeeper? Was that always your, your plan? Yeah, pretty much. Very untalented in running <laughs> and very lazy. So always the tallest, which, which helped. So yeah, I went in goals. Okay. Amy? Uh, so the go-to answer, but I would say Messi, like, growing up, I was watching him playing for Barca. Um, mm. So, yeah, yeah, see him. Matthew, what about yourself? Well, the first football game I went to was actually a Man United game, so I, I would say Rooney, but specifically skinhead Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> he had everything to his game. He was, he was a brilliant player, but also he was scary, so... <laughs> Did you have a favourite Celtic player when you were growing up? Keon Tierney was mine I'd say because he was in my position I think apart from now that's the best Celtic team I've seen so yeah okay good answer um, another one for all of you Ben again we'll start with yourself what is your ultimate ambition as a footballer Oof. That's um, a I think the ultimate ambition is to win 
at all costs. I think there's no there's no better feeling than winning and achieving something with your with your teammates and um, you know when you have a club like Celtic where sixty thousand people are coming to home games and and sometimes we even have more away fans than than the other teams. Um, it kind of shows how much it means to them, so it means a lot to us. So I think I think um, winning is the ultimate. Yeah. It's the ultimate goal. One thing when I was doing a bit of research for this, I, I found out is it. You're a World Cup winner. Did not know that. Do you want to care to explain? It was a long, long time ago. Yeah. I was, um, Under 17's 17. World Cup, back with, with Switzerland. And I was actually looking at some of the, the teams and the players you came up against. You beat a certain Neymar's Brazil during that run as well. Yeah, we, we, we were fortunate enough to go to the tournament, um, played against some really good players. Neymar was one of them. Obviously, kept him quiet. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was just a really good experience. Um, um, you know, at a young level, playing international football and, and obviously winning it was was a little bit surreal. Yeah. Question for the two years as well. Ultimate ambition as a, a footballer, Amy? Um, I think for me just now, I'd love to play for Scotland A squad. Um, I'd love to get there someday. Um, but also, playing at Celtic Park in the Champions League would be good. I think for all the girls. Matthew, for yourself, you're still at the early stages of your career. Yeah, so you've exactly. got it all to come. I'm at the early stages. Um, these two have proved proved herself. I've not done that yet, so I'd have to say short term it would be to make, make my debut and then we can take it from there. Yeah, um, Matthew, we've got one for yourself. Um, are you mentored by a player at all in the first team? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> if there any players in the first team know when you went up into training that have kind of taken you under your wing, maybe people in the, your defensive position yeah. at all? Uh, I remember Stephen Welsh was really good with me. He would uh, talk me through the game. I, I remember um, going up for pre-season. Um, he was really good with that. And um, Greg Taylor, obviously, he's he said he's really loud. Um, so he wasn't shy in talking to me and um, tell me what to do and tell me off. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was he was really good. And it must help as well for yourself and the rest of the guys in the B team that you've got coaches and Darren and Stephen that have been through that journey themselves. Yeah, and I'd I'd say that I'm one of the luckier ones as well because they're both left-sided um, defenders. So I think I've I've got an advantage for that as well. Yeah, uh, Ben, this one's for you. What do you do as a team off the pitch to ensure you play as one on it? It's quite a good question. It's it's we don't really do much different than we would be around in the change room. I think that the togetherness is really good. Um, you know, everybody's rooting for each other. Everybody's pulling in the same direction. Um, obviously, when there is something to celebrate, we celebrate. But, um, you know, there's a lot of hanging out together in, in after training, at lunch and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously, you know, dinners, we all, we all like our food. We all like to hang out and, and talk a little bit because there's a lot of players from, from you know, different upbringing, different nations, and, and it's good to catch up with them. Yeah, uh, another one for yourself as well, Ben, which kind of touched on it, but what are the key differences between playing and working for Dundee United than being at Celtic? You have to win here, you know, if, if I think sometimes at other clubs it's, you know, you kind of limit yourself in a way of, you know, if we get a good result, then that's great, you know, and I think that's not to 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 less of the other team it's just how it is you know it's just a, a thing is expectancy here to win to do well to to improve constantly and, and that's the only way so um yeah it's in no way to to lesser any other team but it's just kind of um you know also the the capabilities as yeah. well this one comes from mark torrance and again it's kind of for for all of you um amy we'll start with yourself with the pressures of playing football in the public eye what do you do to switch off not much, to be fair. Um, sleep quite a lot. Um, I don't really do much when I go home. I just chill, watch TV. It's not you're not, much you're not got do. a hobby or anything now? You've not got anything you're into? No. no. I live a boring life, yeah. <laughs> Matthew, yourself? The same. I would, uh, I would love to get into golf, but I'm absolutely rotten at it. So um, I stick to maybe playing the PlayStation and watching Netflix. Yeah. Ben, anything you do away from? I listen to a bit of podcasts, mm -hmm. read a little bit, um, just autobiographies and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Keeps you second over. And again, last one for, for all three of you. Um, ben, we'll start with yourself. Uh, again, it's another one from Mark Tones. Thank you, Mark. Um, 
how do you keep yourself constantly improving and keeping a focus? Um, I think sometimes, you know, your your. I was speaking before about your your capabilities, and sometimes you kind of limit yourself and what you think you can do. Uh, and then I came into a new environment where, you know, everybody was was better around me. Um, and you have to kind of get up to that level, which is, you know, makes you improve automatically. But what you find with the top athletes, they're always trying to look for an edge. So they're always, they're always in the gym. They're always trying to get 1% better than, than, than they were the day before. So I think it's, it's all about hard work. Um, I know we mentioned a lot of cliches and stuff, but it's, it's true, you know, you, you you know what you put in, you, you get out. So if, if, if you do the right things and, and, you know, a little bit of luck sometimes, plays a part as well but if you're willing to do the right things over and over again and, and do it repeatedly then sometimes you're going to get lucky. Yeah, Amy, what about for yourself? Yeah, I think it's obviously really tough to keep at it every day for the whole season um, but I think if you just think about the rewards you could get at the end of the season as well, like if you keep at it, keep going, you can win the league um, so I think just thinking of stuff like that keeps you going. Yeah, and Matthew for yourself I imagine obviously trying to then make that step into the, the first team that must be the carrot dangling over for you? Exactly. We've got a constant goal at the B team. Um, all of us want to progress onto the A team. Um, so there's a constant goal for us. But also just getting into the habit of winning. And then when you're winning, you just want it more and more. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on and, and being our, our guests this evening. Everybody, give up a big round of applause for Ben Segrist, Amy Gallagher and Matthew Anderson. We're going to let the guys go now, but one other thing. We do have a signed Celtic jersey up here from, from the three of them. One person is going to have a chance to win it. Actually, one of you already has won it. You don't already know. So when the guys are leaving, check under your seats because there will be a Celtic view on one of your seats. And whoever has that, come up and get your signed Celtic top. But everyone again, Ben Segrist, Amy Gallagher and Matthew Anderson.